Hey, thanks for joining. I'm Hashem, you're watching Pushing Film. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a couple of cameras that I found secondhand while on holiday in Japan. I'd given up on thrifting for a while, but while on holiday, I came across these two by accident in two separate secondhand uh, places. And uh, yeah, one of them is a Nikomat EL SLR camera. So made by Nikon, came with this 28 mil 2.8 lens. And uh, the next one was an L35 AD2 point and shoot camera also by Nikon. So if you've been watching the videos on the channel, you know I've been away for a while, for about a month and a half. So I wasn't actually intending to buy any cameras while overseas. And also it just seems really hard to find a good price on secondhand cameras, even in Japan, when you walk into a lot of the, the secondhand stores, anything that's been checked and looked after will usually cost a lot. But with stuff like this, where you take a risk, which I did, I'm not fully guaranteed that either of these will work fine. Uh, you can still find a good deal. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video in case maybe you're gonna be traveling to Japan or even in your home region, if you don't check secondhand stores anymore, just because, you know, like me, you find that it's almost impossible to, to actually get a good deal. It's still worth checking, you know, because if you don't actually go in and have a look, you'll never find the deals. But yeah, I'll just share a bit more about these two cameras that I found. The first one was in the Yuzawa, uh, just township area in the Niigata region. So if you watch that Rolly Superpan video that I did walking around this snowy town, uh, shooting photos, it was actually somewhere around there. So shortly after actually filming that video, uh, Sarah and I walked into this little secondhand store that she had looked up prior and it was just like a little op shop that you'd find here in Australia run by an old guy, you know, really cool setup, lots of interesting items. And I wasn't actually expecting to, to see any cameras at first, but then there was a box hidden down on the side, which had quite a few old ca uh, film cameras. I immediately picked it up, started testing the shutter speeds because, you know, it's a mechanical um, shutter system. All of them seem to be working at what sounds like the correct speed or close enough to it. So having a look at that, taking the lens off, opening the door, looking at the shutter and mirror to make sure it was all moving correctly. It seems to be pretty good. Uh, physically, there's a bit of corrosion and mold, especially on the lens, uh, which probably can be cleaned. I've cleaned up lenses like this before that have turned out really good. But either way, I already shoot the Nikon system, so I have other lenses I could use. Otherwise, it seemed to be really good. The light seals are, are bad, they're gonna need replacement, but all of that is fairly easy to do. And the price of this one was 2,000 yen. So when he said that, I thought, yeah, why not? I'll take the risk, give it a good service back here at home, put a roll of film through it eventually, and then uh, hopefully it turns out fine. It'll be cool to have a second Nikon body that I can use uh, on top of my Nikon FE, which if you know me, I've been using for almost 10 years now. Love the Nikon system, have plenty of Nikon F lenses, and this should be compatible with pretty much any Nikon F lens that you can find out there. So yeah, if you wanna see how that went or either of these cameras ended up going, just check back later. You'll probably find out here on YouTube or on Instagram, and maybe I'll even do a before and after if there is a bit of a restoration involved and it ends up working. So that was the first find. And the second one was this uh, L35 AD2 that I mentioned. You might be familiar with the Nikon L35 point and shoot camera series in general, the most popular being the uh, L35 AF. This one is not quite as good. It has the same great lens, but there's a couple of extra features that have been stripped like the filter ring attachment, the filter thread, so you can't attach a filter to the front of this camera. Maybe some other minor differences like uh, exposure compensation or backlight control, I'm not sure, but I have actually owned one of these in the past except that was a US or Australian English version. This one has the Japanese date back on it. Otherwise, everything else is more or less the same. And this one I found at the Ohi Racecourse Flea Market, which is on during weekends in Japan. You can always look it up online if you're there, definitely check it out. And it also costs 2000 yen. So pretty good find. I also took a risk on this. I don't think it's as much of a risk because it's cosmetically in much nicer condition than the Nikomat and I have put some batteries in it and it seems to be you know, working fine in terms of the autofocus detection. I know that used to be an issue with my previous one. This one actually seems to be spot on. Half press at infinity and the scale shows you infinity. Do, do the same thing close and um, you know, seems to be firing all right. But if you know anything about these cameras, you know that the lens is extremely sharp for a point and shoot and they make a good all round camera, whether it's for street photography or general usage. So yeah, it needs a little bit of a cleanup, but I'm looking forward to putting a roll of film through this one eventually. And um, yeah, owning a copy of that again. 
that's the two cameras that I accidentally ended up buying while in Japan, 2000 yen each. That's about 20 Australian dollars each. And if you're in the US, that translates to only, I don't know, 15 US dollars each. But a part of that is due to the current Japanese yen exchange rate. When I was there, it was almost one to one with 100 yen being an Australian dollar. And uh, it still should be about the same if you're traveling to Japan uh, at the time of this video. Now, you can always go to secondhand stores in Shinjuku and find cameras that are going to be guaranteed in much nicer physical condition with the ability to go and return them, but you'll be paying a lot more. So don't give up on checking the obscure little secondhand stores if you are traveling somewhere like Tokyo and even more so in the towns outside of Tokyo, the smaller towns where they don't really have the tourists coming through and finding this stuff. And uh, places like the flea market just have so many sellers that you'll probably still be able to find a bargain because a lot of them are just sold as is and untested. Another great thing about going to that flea market is that it's within access from Tokyo, probably half an hour if I remember right. And it's great just to walk around, enjoy the weather, take photos if you like. There's plenty of secondhand items like clothing and uh, electronics. This particular seller was mainly selling old cameras, be it film cameras or old digital cameras. And when I reached his stall, we were there at the end of the market hours, he was actually packing up. He'd already packed up probably half his stuff. You know, who knows how many great cameras he had that were already sold, but I saw this one and quickly had a look at it while he was finishing up and, you know, asked the price, 2000 yen, went for it. So yeah, definitely recommend places like flea markets, unknown secondhand stores, op shops, whatever you want to call them, and just trying your luck to see what you can find, even if it's back in your home country. So I'd love to hear what you think about these two particular cameras or about secondhand camera shopping in Japan or in general. Do you still find decent bargains in 2024? It's getting harder, but I think there's still some great stuff out there. And when it comes to these two Nikon cameras, would you like to see any future content on either of them? And if so, which one, uh, you know, should I try to restore first or test out first? What would you like to know about it? Is there any particular kind of, you know, video that you'd like to see or content? Let me know in the comments. And I also just wanna let you know that I have an upcoming video that I shot in Japan doing night photography. That's going to be the main subject of that video that I'll be releasing soon. So hopefully you'll stick around to check that one out. Thanks for watching this one. And I'll see you next time.